Okay, okay. I think that we are complete and we may start right away. So uh, good morning once more and uh, thank you very much for joining uh, the breakout session devoted to synergies in the era of research infrastructures. Uh, my name is Lukáš Levák. I'm director of R&D department at the Czech Ministry of Education, News and Sports. And uh, I will have the pleasure to moderate this, uh, uh, this uh, panel session, uh, which will be attended uh, by uh, a number of dis distinguished guests. But uh, before introducing them to you, uh, I would like also to, to, uh, to uh, welcome Jana Kolar, uh, chair of the European Strategy Forum of, on Research Infrastructures, who's going to serve uh, as uh, the rapporteur of this session and uh, present the conclusions uh, on our debates uh, during the final concluding plenary session. So many thanks, uh, Jana, for coming to Prague. And uh, without any further ado, I will now proceed with the introduction of uh, our panelists. Uh, so the first one is Jacques Demont, uh, who is Director General of uh, the ECRIN ERIC, uh, European Research Infrastructure, which stands for European Clinical Research Infrastructure Network. Uh, Jacques? Thank you very much. Uh, uh, the next one uh, uh, in the uh, alphabetical order uh, will be Jan Hrušák. Uh, Jan Hrušák is not on the program uh, because he replaced on a last minute one of the speakers who wasn't able to uh, come uh, due to uh, some sudden sickness. Uh, so we are very happy to have uh, Jan here. It goes without saying uh, uh, that, uh, that uh, uh, Jan is the previous S3 chair, uh, currently working at uh, our ministry as a special envoy for research infrastructure and also being a senior scientist of, uh, in the Jan Heyerovsky Institute uh, for uh, Physical uh, Chemistry of the Czech Academy of Sciences. Uh, the following uh, panelist um, uh, is uh, a special guest from the European Commission, uh, Apostolia Karamali, who is uh, a head of unit for RNI actors and research careers working for DGRTD at the European Commission. Uh, Leah, welcome here. And uh, last but not least, uh, we uh, also have a representative of the Czech Research Infrastructure Landscape. It's uh, Mr. Jiří Nantl, who serves as director of the Central European Institute of Technology. Welcome. And uh, you should definitely remember Yezi because uh, he's going to be one of the uh, hosts of the International Conference on Research Infrastructures, uh, which 2022 edition will be held in Brno in October. So you will definitely have uh, many opportunities to, to meet with Yezi. So uh, we have our, um, our panel completed. Uh, and uh, I will start uh, with an introductory uh, warm-up question. Uh, and uh, uh, the question relates uh, your perspective, your general perspective on synergies, giving your position in the research and innovation ecosystem. What is your perspective and uh, in what situations are you approaching uh, synergies? So uh, let's start with Jack. Thank you. I think it's a good question first. And I will try to, go, to, to give a good answer. So the, the, the perspective of synergies can be uh, different from infrastructure to infrastructure. For instance, uh, some of them are focusing very much on the cost of construction because the, the main challenge is to get funded for the establishment of the infrastructure, for the purchase of the equipment and so on. Others are more focused on the, on the operation, meaning that uh, the, the main financial challenge is linked to the, the operation and how to, how to get funded for the provision of services of support to research projects from the community. And also, how is it possible to, to combine different sources of funding to get support from, from these perspectives? 
Excellent answer. Thank you very much. Uh, let's proceed with Jan. Yes, colleagues. Uh, uh, let me try to uh, approach this question from a bit different, different perspective, because I do not have any hands-on experience being involved in uh, in any of particular infrastructure apart of being a user of computational facilities and this is not sufficient to speak about detailed uh, perspective of, of synergies of funding instruments. So I would like to approach this, this question uh, from let's say a much broader, let's say strategical perspective because for me uh, synergies of funding starts with a holistic approach to the entire system, to understand the needs of the system, to understand the needs of the research infrastructures, to understand the needs and capacities of, of the funders, the, the policy makers, and, and within this, this holistic picture, uh, the synergies might be different, but still very relevant for supporting in different or with different financial instruments, the entire entire system. So, so I am I'm advocating, uh, and it's it's my already personal obsession in some sense, and an interlinked, interconnected ecosystem of research infrastructures that spans a very broad area from very fundamental research up to very very applied research, an area where one one meets the needs of the different user categories of, of research infrastructures, uh, which goes as far as, as to innovations. And, and within this, this, this ecosystem, it's then uh, very appropriate to consider synergies of the different funding models. Thank you very much, Jan. Uh, here comes uh, Leah from the European Commission. What is your perspective on the synergies in the era of research infrastructures? Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Lukas. Good morning, everybody. I, I cannot but agree that synergies start with content. We are in a situation of complex, large-scale infrastructures that involve complex scientific questions, complexity in terms of actors, in terms of timing, and therefore understanding and having an in-depth knowledge of what is uh, that we're trying to achieve is very important. There, therefore, planning is extremely important, is the fundamental element of synergies, planning the content and programming accordingly. Then, of course, by definition, because of the multitude of partners, we are looking at the multitude of instruments and funding sources, and therefore we look at an ex extremely complex financing engineering model that needs to be achieved. We can be proud of many achievements, but there are definitely areas of improvement. And as we move towards a more mature uh, research infrastructure landscape at European level, we can consider even scaling up the European contribution to this on the basis, of course, of proven content of a shared European interest. And this is what uh, I would like to discuss today. Many thanks. Uh, and Diezi, uh, what is your view on synergies and how do you approach them from uh, the position of director of one of the largest R&D centers in Czechia? Yes, thank you very much, Lukáš, for the question. I think a very simple answer could have been that, that CETEC has been built on synergies from its beginning. When we were set up in 2010, 2011, already then the concept of infrastructures was deeply embedded, but at the same time we are a research institute. So we, we mostly speak also the topic of the conference is synergy of funding, but for, for my position, it's uh, mainly thinking, as, as you have said, about synergy of activities. And that is not always easy because as a host of a number of research infrastructures, SATEC has a responsibility to serve the overall community. But also as a research institute director, I need to see that, that, that the needs of, and the focus of research needs of our academic community as SATEC is being served appropriately. And at times, this has even required that we set up a core facilities that are not part of research infrastructures. So there are conflicting issues also in terms of activities. But I think we've, we've always made it. Yeah, and congratulations that you definitely succeeded. 
So many thanks uh, for your replies for this uh, warm-up uh, question. Now we know from uh, which angle we may approach you with, uh, with uh, further questions. So uh, the first question uh, concerns uh, the good practice uh, examples and, and uh, the challenges which are still persistent in the European research area. And uh, we have uh, here a representative of the European Commission uh, in a way of a, a policymaker. We have two directors uh, of uh, European research infrastructure, so to say, and we also have uh, uh, Jan, uh, with a lot of uh, experience uh, with uh, strategy making in the era of research infrastructures. So uh, having uh, this background, this portfolio, this experience, uh, how do you consider uh, the actual state of play? Do you think that uh, the research infrastructure in Europe and stakeholders who are creating uh, the policies who are providing funding uh, and who are operating the facilities, do you think they succeed? Uh, and uh, what good practice examples you would mention? And at the same time, do you see a clear bottleneck on which we should focus in the future? Jacques, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the question. I think uh, there is still space for improvement because, uh, for instance, um, the research infrastructure with an ERIC status get together under the ERIC Forum umbrella. The ERIC Forum started as a project funded by the Horizon 2020 three, four years ago. And every year, one of the work package produces a policy brief uh, document. And the first one was about the funding of projects supported by research infrastructure, meaning it's not about the funding of the construction of the infrastructure, but about the, the funding of the operation, about the budget for the, the operation. And this resulted in, in this document that I, sh I showed you, that, that the title is the ERIC Forum Policy Brief Funding Models for Access to ERIC Multinational Transnational Services. So in the title, it's clear that uh, the objective of the ERIC is not to support regional or national project only, but really to, so to be an instrument to support multinational and transnational uh, uh, project. And based on this, pro uh, this project, so I invite you to, to read the document. It's not so long, it's just 20 pages. But I will just extract two or three uh, main recommendations. The first one is that we realize that there is a gap in funding <coughs> meaning that the ERIC are eligible for funding in the host country and sometimes for the national node. But uh, for instance, if you consider an ERIC like ECRIN, whose mission is to support multinational clinical trial, the headquarters are based in Paris, but not all the projects involve France as a partner, meaning if there is a clinical trial run in Czech Republic, in Poland, and in Italy, France has nothing to do. But, uh, but France, the, the, the ERIC, the headquarter based in Paris, had to provide some coordination activity to, to support this clinical trial, and they are not eligible for the, for the trial. So this is something that has to, to be fixed. We have to really investigate what is the, the meaning, the legal signification of the text in the ERIC uh, regulation, but I think this should be something written in the ERIC regulation that the, the, the eligibility for funding by national funds of the ERIC should be at least uh, in all the ERIC member country and optimally in all the European member countries. So this is an important example and th this is uh, provided in this document. A second one is um, the role of the ERIC in the ERANET, meaning the ERIC are instrument for the implementation of research services for multinational and transnational uh, project. The ERANET has are an instrument for funding, now it is a partnership, an instrument for funding multinational projects, so this should be a better, let's say, alignment of the objective of the ERANET and uh, the, the use of the infrastructure. And I think I, I really count on the, on the new concept of partnership with the COFAN, meaning that the 30% COFAN that will be provided by the Commission could be an instrument to fund the participation of the ERIC in this complex uh, project. And the third example I wanted to, to stress is also the, ex the example of the ERC, meaning that there is a chapter on the ERC funding in this uh, 
document. And um, the ERC has put in place a very interesting mechanism to avoid competition between the scientific objective and the funding for, for the science, for the research, and the funding for the infrastructure, for the instrument, for the facilities, for the equipment. Meaning that if you get a grant uh, as an advanced ERC grant, where you get a two and two and a half uh, million euros, but in addition you can get up to one million uh, that is a ring fence budget. It's impossible to merge the budget, and this budget is dedicated either to purchasing equipment or to access to large facilities. So it should be uh, clarified that the research infrastructure, the ERIC, should be seen as large-scale facility. And I think this model is a very interesting one because it's a way to ensure that the quality of the technology, the quality of the data, will be secured through this ring fence budget dedicated to the infrastructure. So this is just three examples that are drawn from this document, but I think there are probably something relevant to discuss the synergies between the, the, the complex element of this uh, ecosystem. Thank you. Indeed, very important examples. Uh, let's proceed with Jan. Jan, uh, how do you view or how do you consider the measures that are being implemented by uh, the Commission and member states in terms of facilitating uh, the implementation of European research infrastructures from the point of view of synergies. Are we successful in providing a sufficient synergic environment? Actually, when preparing or not preparing, but thinking about mm -hmm. what I should address here in, in this panel. Uh, uh, yesterday evening, I, I saw uh, uh, that everybody will be speaking about the different uh, funding models, about the synergies of the European, national, regional, and whatever funding uh, instruments available. And uh, I, I felt that also uh, after the very nice lectures we, we've received yesterday by, by Wied Wondrak and and Alan Weeks, who presented really very, very nice and instructive examples how the different funding instruments have been used in the Czech Republic uh, for funding research infrastructures. Uh, I, I, I somehow felt that, uh, again, I would like to open an other, other uh, perspective uh, to, to synergies and funding of, of research infrastructures, and I hope I will not interfere so much with with, uh, the, with Lia, uh, who probably will speak from from a similar policy policy perspective. But for me, the best or or one of the very good examples of of, of synergies is S3 itself, and S3 uh, as a, as a strategic body has a very, very, uh, or is very well positioned to develop uh, plans and models Leah was speaking about earlier, to, 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 to open a uh, very important discussion points, including funding. S3 is a very good example of, of member states coordinating their, their financial efforts, mm -hmm. uh, combining all the, all the financial resources, supporting the strategic positioning of research infrastructures in the in the overall research landscape uh, of, of of Europe, uh, even even uh, the the very visible uh, achievement of of S3, uh, namely the research infrastructure roadmaps, and and the impetus uh, these roadmaps have been providing over the years to to national policy making has have contributed uh, largely. To, 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 to strategic alignment of the different financial sources. So I think this is something I would, I would like to highlight here. There are a few, few other points and uh, they are also, also important. I mean, uh, it's not so well or sufficiently uh, remembered uh, nowadays, but uh, S3 has developed and has been pioneering uh, the variable geometry uh, concept. And this is something which is now revitalized 
in, 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 the, in the new era governance. And also this uh, variable geometry concept in its impacts has uh, a very, very large implications for funding of, of research infrastructure. So it, shall be, it shall be repeated. Uh, there is also something we have been discussing from very early stages uh, on in, in S3, when, when speaking about research infrastructures, about uh, uh, bringing uh, a multidisciplinary picture uh, to, the, to the research infrastructure uh, landscape. And this is the alignment of research infrastructures and e-infrastructures. E Again, mm -hmm. a, a, a concept that is shaping now uh, the, 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 the considerations in various policy domains, big data and EOSC and all, the, all these activities. And again, this, this is something which uh, requires new models, new ways of thinking about, about research infrastructures. I, I mean, uh, this, this, this again brings me back to that where, where I started, that probably it's important to, to, to develop this integrated ecosystem, this holistic picture of the, uh, of the research infrastructure landscape to a new policy, policy model and have then sufficient information for efficient funding and way forward. Thank you very much, Jan, uh, for your, for your val valuable inputs uh, by um, introducing also the policymaking level to uh, the debate, uh, which uh, mainly focuses on the synergies at the funding level, but uh, it's extremely important as well, uh, because uh, policymaking and funding has to be aligned at all times. Uh, now we'll proceed uh, with Leah. Uh, Leah, what is your perspective uh, representing the European Commission? Yes, I, I think I will uh, follow uh, along the same line that uh, Jan uh, uh, started presenting, but hopefully adding some uh, additional perspective from the uh, Commission uh, view. Uh, so first of all, indeed, uh, the first level is that uh, uh, at European level we can be proud of having Europe important European, an important European framework for research infrastructures. And this is both on the strategy level, but also on the regulatory level. We have, uh, the, we have ESPRI and we have long-standing experience in developing roadmaps and having a very good understanding of the European landscape and also a very good alignment in the way that we prepare roadmaps between European and national levels by and large. Um, we also have a good regulatory framework because we, we are also proud of uh, uh, more than 10 years of experience in establishing consortia to manage to operate infrastructures, the ERICs. We have 24 ERICs today and more in the pipeline. Uh, and we are in the process of, uh, fr from the Commission side, adopting our third report towards the Council and Parliament with recommendations on how we can improve the ERIC landscape. But already this uh, important framework that we have on research infrastructures allow us to have a good understanding of the European landscape and our long-term objectives, as I was saying before, given the fact that we are in a very complex scenario in terms of timing, in terms of size, number of partners involved, and complex scientific issues more broadly. So this is a very important backbone, and I think we can be proud in terms of achievement at Europe European level uh, as, uh, to, 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 to support synergies. Um, the second element I wanted to mention is that we also have a, 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 an ever-growing broader policy context for research and innovation that is also quite supportive in direct, directly or indirectly. Um, we have 20 years of experience with the European research area. We have recently had important political decisions by ministers on how we can revitalize, restructure the European research area, improve decision-making, governance. Uh, we now have uh, um, a document or a blueprint, the Pact for Research and Innovation, that describes areas of common actions, principles, investment targets, governance and monitoring mechanisms. So there is an improved and practical methodology in place that allows us to have to couple uh, policy, programmatic vision for research, and also investment targets as well. So this is a, a, a very important uh, element that will is bound to influence in, an, in a positive way research infrastructures, although 
funding and synergy still need to be optimized. That they, they optimize. This is uh, certain. The third element I wanted to bring to the discussion is that, uh, of course, research infrastructures are primarily funded by member states, but we believe that the contributions that come from European level programs contribute substantially, especially to the federation of the need and to the consolidation of the landscape. And we do this through different angles. We do it from the research angle through contributions from Horizon to support uh, preparatory phases, design phases, consolidation. Um, we, uh, for services, technology development, we do it also um, from the investment perspective. We have a very, very good legacy of examples from uh, investment, uh, successful investment products, either towards ERICS uh, or uh, research infrastructures more broadly, coming from the EAB, European Investment Bank Group. Um, so a uh, very important uh, successful projects under Innofin Science and the Horizon 2020 access to risk finance uh, facilities. And we hope that we will be able to continue, and I will come back to this later on, with under InvestEU. So investment is a very important element, often forgotten, but has contributed substantially to, um, to general investment. So access to risk finance, actually, to be precise. And then uh, we also, of course, have the structural funds, and more recently, the recovery and resilience facility. Um, we know that out of the, of the funds implemented at the, the recovery and resilience facility across Europe, so far, 40% is allocated to research and innovation, and a big part of it is dedicated on research infrastructures investments. So, um, and of course, needless to say, and I, I agree with, uh, with Jan, also on the digital side, we have had a strong legacy of different funding streams uh, for e-infrastructures. Uh, more recently, um, not to say the least, not only through research, but also through investment, again, structural funds, but also a Connecting Europe Facility, Digital Europe Program for Services, and more recently, under discussion with a digital take-aid policy program. So, a lot of, uh, a, lo a lot is happening there, and the Commission recently adopted uh, this week the Synergies Guidance. So, um, which are the challenges that remain? So, yes, we, we, are, we are proud of all these achievements. Which challenges remain? There are a lot of challenges, <laughs> and we will be discussing this later on. So, first of all, uh, the biggest challenge within uh, research infrastructures is to align policy to programming. We have the roadmaps on the side of S3, but the priorities that we identify there are not necessarily fully aligned with the way we implement funding. This is partly fine because we need to give the freedom, we need to have a level playing field and be open on a competitive basis, but at the same time, if we want to be strategic and have a long-term perspective in Europe, we need to better align the strategy that we have on the S3 side and the ERIC framework with the way we implement funding. The second important challenge is that the level of detail that we have today in the roadmaps at European level do not necessarily correspond to all possible sources of funding that we have in terms of content. For example, if we want to fund technology development, which are the challenges we want to achieve? Which are the common joint technology developments? Where do we want to be? in terms of technologies that we want to develop for infrastructures in 10 years from now. Who has the answer to this? We need to work further on this point. Finally, and in order not to be very long, in terms of instruments, how do we combine the instruments in a smart way? Today, the different instruments have been combined mostly by opportunity, ex post, and not by strategic design, strategic financial engineering design, for example, say, through research, I will be supporting those upgrade needs or those evolution needs, while through access to risk finance, be that debt, for example, I will be trying to support possible gaps in public financing um, in order to have the long-term perspective for infrastructures and which are the parts that are covered at national level, European level, and so on, in a more strategic way. And this is important to address in the future. Um, so these are a few considerations I wanted to share. Many thanks, Leia, uh, for your rich response <laughs> to our first question. And uh, the last one uh, responding to, to the opening question will be Yeji. 
what is your perspective um, on the synergic environment? Um, I mentioned that in my job I have a broad responsibility that only that part of SATEC which, which is about research infrastructure. So I would say from that broader perspective it's technical and sometimes fuzzy, I can say. I've, I think that this leads to difficulties when, when we engage or I engage with the university in the first place which sets us up or with policy makers. They, it's sometimes difficult to explain all the acronyms, all the various levels, frameworks, although they make sense and I think at the European level they are very well coordinated and, and this works and is improving. But the biggest gap I see is really the, the understanding, maybe comprehension on the side of policymakers and even governing bodies of broader academic institutions which follow many goals. And this makes us all the time, again, defending why, why we are part of these infrastructures, why it's important. It should also be noted that the role of research infrastructures in terms of funding is very different whether you are a state with a robust institutional funding of research itself or with a low share of institutional funding of research where the infrastructures then become in fact a second pillar of institutional funding and, and mainly the national governments should realize then rec that recognizing research infrastructures is and should be in fact decision about the national priorities. You, you, you can't have two independent policies not, not very well aligned. But that's sometimes also the case. <coughs> so, so this is a very important thing to remember that in, and that is a huge number of member states where the funding, institutional funding in research is at low levels, then the focus on infrastructure in fact is the decision about where we cluster the excellence. And this is also sometimes not, not very well understood. I think the European frameworks work well, but more engagement from national governments and, and, and more work, especially also in cross-border collaboration. I should note SATEC works extensively, not only, but extensively in life sciences. And in those fields, physical proximity also matters. So cross-border collaboration between neighboring states uh, should be enhanced, I believe, although this is something that all the directors of research institutions in the neighboring countries also fear, because when, if we should really have such a debate of where to purchase the, the really expensive equipment, it, it would be very difficult. But, uh, but it's necessary because the, the, the biggest gap in the end is the core investment, which is very expensive. It cannot be written into any single team grant even of the ERC advanced size. That's a very high figure million euro investments that needs to be repeated in life sciences once in several years because the lifespan of equipment is quite short in those fields. So, so these are the gaps and I'm afraid they are mainly at the national level. Excellent. Thank you very much for completing our first round. Now we will move to the European dimension. Leah has mentioned that uh, the costs of research infrastructures are mainly covered by the member states and that the incentives by Horizon Europe or previously Horizon 2020 are meant to uh, focus uh, on the activities uh, uh, helping uh, merging, networking, uh, integrating the facilities, but also uh, also uh, uh, also other things. Uh, so let's now focus on Horizon Europe specifically. Uh, do you think that uh, Horizon Europe uh, provides the right mix of incentives that efficiently complement? funding of research infrastructures at the member state level. Let's start with Jack. Thank you. I must say that there are new instruments that are really of interest in the Horizon Europe program. First of all, in the infrastructure program, there are now a clear distinction between the infraserve, which is about providing services 
providing infrastructure services to the community. And this is, for instance, very much aligned with, uh, with the other chapter of the Horizon Europe program, like, for instance, the cancer mission, the mission in general, or the, uh, the partnership and so on. I think th this synergy is something very important. Uh, we, we have to keep in mind that uh, the objective of the research infrastructure is not only to develop the research infrastructure, but also to provide high quality, efficient services, meeting the expectation of the scientific community and ensuring the highest possible level of quality in terms of quality of data, quality of methodology, quality of technology and so on. So it's really very important to have this uh, infrastructure calls, especially the infraserve and the infra, infra dev call that uh, really promote the development of, uh, of new services and promote the implementation of uh, new services. The, the two other um, new, new items in the Horizon Europe program are the missions. I think that there are six missions in our field, uh, the cancer mission. And uh, the mission, interestingly, starts with a program to understand what are the infrastructure need in terms of, uh, of cancer. For instance, uh, there is a call called UNCAN, and uh, the UNCAN project is about uh, establishing the strategic agenda on what are the services needed from the cancer community, uh, taking into account the existing infrastructure and considering the, the, the need for development either of new infrastructure or probably more of new services provided by the already existing infrastructure. So this is a way to develop uh, synergies. The other very interesting uh, topic is the, the, the issue of the, the partnership. Now there will be more partnership, for instance, in our field, uh, in the past, there were Eranet, some of them having a coffin and so on. Now the, the partnership will be broader. For instance, in the field of health research, there will be a large partnership called Era for Health. Era for Health, including provision for the funding of multinational clinical trials, which is uh, really something new. And uh, this really takes into account the, the, the capacity of infrastructure to, to provide high quality transnational multinational and, uh, if possible, multidisciplinary services to the, the project. So these are the, the big achievements of the Horizon Europe program from my point of view. Thank you very much, Jacques. Let's proceed uh, with Jan. So Jan, uh, how do you view Horizon Europe? Does it provide the right uh, mix of incentives for research infrastructures uh, funding and operation, complementing the member states funding? Uh, definitely the simple answer would be yes. Uh, but uh, let, me, let me again here uh, say, say something out of my, uh, let's say, past experience. And this is, uh, S3 has not uh, discovered but further developed a life cycle concept of research infrastructures. And within uh, this life cycle, uh, the horizon funding provides uh, quite important contribution, not so much in, in volume, but, but in, in time and space to, to the national funding uh, to research infrastructures. And it, it provides seed money for, for the early phases of, of research infrastructures. It, it allows the development of, of, of certain, certain models uh, which are missing in the uh, life of a research infrastructure. All these uh, early stages are mainly financed by, by Horizon. It provides also impetus for developing this, this European idea, this, 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 this networking idea, uh, developing the, developing the pan-European concept of, of research infrastructures. And in that sense, uh, this, this, this funding is very, very important. Uh, after, after the research infrastructure somehow enters uh, the, 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 the S3 process, uh, the funding shifts mainly to, to uh, the national level, uh, but, but still European funding from Horizon uh, can support and is supporting 
certain research infrastructure activities. And in that sense, I would like to mention, in top of everything what was said by, by Jacques, uh, that I felt that this, this, this cluster initiative that was supported by Horizon was very, very important for, for developing new concepts, new ideas, how research infrastructures can contribute to the, to the integration of the European research system. Many thanks, Jan. Uh, Leah, what is your perspective? Uh, do you think that the incentives, the, the, the list of incentives uh, within Horizon Europe is, is uh, more or less complete? Or would you like to see a new one in the next multi-annual financial framework or maybe also outside the framework program? dedicated question to me. <laughs> so as, as I was saying before, certainly we have a strong legacy from the framework program for the support of research infrastructures. This is the simple answer. And uh, for sure, as I was saying before, the framework programs have supported the early phases of uh, research infrastructures uh, in their development. Also, the framework program has facilitated other activities, for example, transnational access, technology development, um, consolidation of a number of networks in addition to the infrastructures re formally recognized uh, in S3. So it, it has created a certain momentum and definitely has established a, a strong incentive scheme coming from the European level for consolidation at European level. Um, however, as I was saying before, um, this, uh, the framework program is not fully aligned to all strategic processes that we have at European level. Also. Also, the framework program is not the only source of funding and very often we miss the big picture we have the pieces per infrastructure maybe but we as I was saying before it is important to well thinking ahead in towards the future of having a proper financial engineering model with the different contributions coming from the different programs we know it is complex but this is our uh, let's say this is the way we work at European level we are this is the external constraint that we have and we can certainly improve that um, in the future. Now, um, as you know, uh, towards the end of Horizon 2020, we had a high-level group addressing also the success, evaluating the success of implementation of Horizon 2020 in support of research infrastructures. And there, there were a number of recommendations, um, and uh, the report, of course, is available online, but some practical recommendations were about the more detailed follow-up of uh, how different infrastructures are funded, how we better integrate, in, integrate funding between physical and digital infrastructures, um, uh, how we, uh, we improve the design of the funding that we are going to integrate in the framework programs. And for this reason, we recently organized also a workshop on the RNI needs together with ESFRI on the RNI needs of research infrastructures pointing the finger to the fact that we really need to have a more strategic approach and aligning the priorities in order to look ahead and see how we can improve the limited resources that we have available. Of course, the framework program will always support the research phases of a research infrastructure, meaning, for example, the initial phase, the concept design, or the upgrade, the evolution, and so on. It cannot cover all the operational needs of the infrastructure still, we can certainly improve the way we implement. In which way? First of all, when it comes to the strategic parts, not the bottom-up parts, um, it is important to act by design. And therefore, although we have many instruments with which we can experiment in Horizon Europe, because these are long-term projects, for example, it is very hard to have a successful co-funded partnership without prior preparation outside the funding phase. We know very well the successful partnerships, and we have a lot of experience in the framework programs, start with at least three, four years in advance, not to say more, in order to prepare a strategic research and innovation agenda, to pull the partners, to think who can co-invest, and only then on this basis launch calls. This would heavily increase the success and the strategic approach that we may have in the program. Uh, so for me, this is a fundamental issue when, when thinking ahead. The other point I wanted to say that I do agree that there are different sources of Horizon Europe often neglected. Uh, we know that, for example, 
example, Pillar 1, Marie Curie supports uh, researchers' mobility, also with research infrastructures, the ERC grants, but also Pillar 3, um, uh, when it comes to EIC, the spin-offs, and so on. Um, and, of course, Pillar 2 with the missions and partnerships, extremely relevant. But again, how do we become more proactive to better be build bridges between Marie Curie and research infrastructures. We know that research infrastructures are essential. They are one of the top priorities to attract talent. What do we do about it? How do we introduce better bridges? And I will come with an example on this. Um, and the same applies to other parts. For example, missions. How do we influence the implementation plans of missions in order to design long time in advance how we're going to implement funding from research infrastructures and to achieve what? Of course, through calls for proposals and competitive processes, of course, we have the direct effect of uh, uh, having some financial support to good ideas. But if we look at our long-term strategic objective, we need to design it better. I think this is... This is a very important element. I come back to the point on building bridges and I use an example from the recently adopted innovation communication this week. So what did we say there? To, we said that in order to attract talent, one of the different actions, if you go to the talent chapter of the innovation communication, we talk about um, exchange schemes between pillar one and pillar three of Horizon Europe. Uh, co the concept is simple. Uh, but long due to be implemented. The idea is to use, to offer the opportunity to researchers benefiting from projects in Pillar 1, ERC, Marie Curie, research infrastructures, to have an internship experience in projects under Pillar 3, EIT and EIC. In other words, researchers, probably fund in fundamental research, will have an experience in a startup. And actually, we're even thinking the other way around to bring entrepreneurs from the startups. We have around 5,000 startups, for example, under the pool of EIC, to give them the experience to see what it is working in a lamp and thinking of fundamental science questions. So we need to be more proactive in the future with these schemes, among other things. So design on one side and a little bit more creative in building these kind of bridges in order to create an effect of scale in the context of the limited resources. Regarding the next steps, uh, allow me to come back later on, but definitely uh, a short answer to your question is that do we need more than the framework program? I believe yes, and we have seen this in a very successful way, as I was saying before, in the digital infrastructures, where we have at European level both funding for research but also for operational needs of the infrastructures, and we have created the instruments to do so. We have a lot to learn by that example. And I'm happy to come back to this point. Thanks a lot, Leah, for a very uh, comprehensive uh, answer, and uh, especially for mentioning the uh, Commission communication on a new European uh, innovation agenda. Uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, uh, you will all read this doc if you haven't done so far. It's a very important uh, piece of, uh, of uh, input to our policy making approach to innovation at the European level. And uh, Leah very nicely uh, explained uh, how the research infrastructure may use opportunities also outside the pillar one. So, so this is, um, this is uh, very crucial. Uh, Yuji, uh, you will once again uh, complete our round. Uh, is there any piece of puzzle that you consider missing in the landscape of uh, funding and other initiatives uh, introduced by Horizon Europe? I also understand you want me to keep it short, maybe the answer. Uh, okay, so, so to start with the original question, I, I, I would say that the EU funding is complementary and profiling and is limited by the notion that you should follow the European dimension, which is not necessarily the, the first line of thinking when you work at the institutional level. So, so, so it has its limitation. It will never be the core funding. It's not meant for that. I think I, I agree with you. More or less, it works well. There is room for improvement. I would say uh, may, maybe two points. Ba back to Leah, I think the research infrastructure stuff 
career paths should be more highlighted by, by European documents. Maybe the HR logo is a proper tool for that, because that is nowadays really a separate and, and very important and attractive career path. And it is not always being recognized even at the institutional level. The institutions are now developing the, how to treat the stuff, how to categorize it, how to make it equal with, with the research group members. So I think this one is very important and it would help also to work with a scheme such as Marie Curie, with the mobility of staff with, uh, with their careers. Second uh, point, I think in widening perhaps we should think back how, how the tools there work and maybe the commission should uh, recognize that the emphasis on always building something new doesn't work best in all the circumstances that when you look to the widening countries it the, maybe a better approach is to strengthen those who are already strong because as Leah also has mentioned it even preparing for such project requires to have before very substantial operational and planning capacity. And uh, I think from my perspective, also from, I hear, from what I hear from colleagues from other widening member states, this is, uh, this is a very important point. It should be better addressed to, to the general European benefit. But, but otherwise, I would agree with Jan. Many thanks to Yuri as well. Um, so uh, let's uh, have the third round uh, before we provide the opportunity to our audience to ask you a question. And uh, my third question will be a rather simple. Uh, would you name uh, uh, any recommendation, any suggestion uh, when it comes to uh, enhancing, advancing, improving uh, the policy making and funding uh, landscape in Europe. Uh, what would you do better? What would be, what would be your adjustments to the ecosystem? Chuck, you can start. Thank you. Um, yeah, difficult question, but I would, I would, I would like to summarize, uh, to, to take into account three recommendations. The first one is that all the infrastructure are facing the similar problem of a shortage of expertise in the field of data science, meaning that all of us need data scientists and it's difficult for us to train the data scientists and even more to, to supervise the PhD and so on. So I think the Marie Curie is probably one of the schemes that should be uh, promoted to train data scientists with a dual training, meaning both getting trained in data science in the different aspects in the data security, anonymization, in the, let's say uh, the, 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 the stratification through machine learning and so on, but having also a good understanding of what is the data about. And because this is a problem, sometimes we are able to hire, it costs a lot, but we are able to hire data scientists, but they don't understand anything about clinical research. And at the end of the day, first of all, we are not able to supervise them. And second, they are not really able to understand what they are doing and what is the reason why we ask them to, to do that. So th this is a major problem having a, a set of well-trained data scientists aware of the scientific background in each of the infrastructure. And I think the co-supervision of PhD program under the Marie Curie could be an opportunity. It's probably not the only one, but this is really a major, major problem for us. The second aspect I wanted to mention is the aspect of transdisciplinarity. For instance, what we are doing in clinical trials is just a randomized prospective experiment, meaning that basically in clinical trial you randomize a patient and a subgroup of patients take the treatment A, another group take the treatment B, and uh, by definition, since they were selected by randomization, the two groups are equivalent, so there is no confounding factor. The same thing can be done for many other areas, for instance, especially in the field of social science, you know that uh, randomized uh, 
cluster trial were used in economics, but it can be used uh, just to, uh, to measure the efficacy of different teaching program. You can just randomize the school and apply different teaching program in different school by randomization. And if you have enough schools, and this is possible with the population size of the European Union, you can say, okay, this teaching program is better than this teaching program. And th this is really hard knowledge. And I think, uh, and I would like to be able to better interact with our colleagues in social science to promote this sort of transdisciplinary approach. This is just an example. And second, um, yeah, there is a need also to establish uh, something smaller than the cluster, but bigger than one single infrastructure to be able to support complex project. By complex project, I mean the project that's, that requires services for more than one infrastructure. In our field, for instance, there is ACRIN for clinical trial, there is BBMRI for the biobanks, there is EATRIS for translational research. 80% of the time we work alone because the investigator come to us and they have requests that correspond to just the services by one of the infrastructure. But in 10 to 20% of the project, they come with requests that correspond to services by more than one infrastructure. And instead of asking them to go to the butcher to, to buy the, the meat and then to baker to buy the bread and then to go to the, the, any other shop to, to buy something different, we should create an integrated single, uh, single roof uh, department store where the people can find the services from more than one infrastructure for complex projects. So this is something we are currently developing with BBMRI for the Biobank and Atris for Clinical Research and the, 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 the name of the AMRI, which is the Alliance for Medical Research Infrastructure. Maybe we will enlarge also to other, but I think there is no need to have something where all the infrastructure would merge because it would be a very messy situation. But having this sort of federated approach and with a single access for complex project would probably be an improvement in the way we work instead of just working alone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. Very inspiring. Uh, Jan, your turn now. What would be your advice? Yeah, uh, somehow, somehow we are all drawing from from one pot. So uh, several of the ideas uh, Jack was just mentioning, I had of course on my list as well. And I mean, uh, I'm, I'm calling that the interlinked ecosystem, but it's exactly the 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 the, the, the way how interoperability, interoperability of research infrastructures through sharing data, through trans disciplinary uh, cooperation uh, shall, shall, be, shall be improved in order to bring the entire system uh, forward. Uh, this, is, this, is, this is a part of the, of the thoughts I, I have been developing. On the other hand, uh, there is something which we have not yet mentioned and uh, it just came to my mind while listening to, to Jack. Uh, several years ago, I have been chairing a group on sustainability of research infrastructures. And uh, one would think that uh, sustainability is mainly uh, linked to funding. But uh, we have developed on 37, if I am remembering correctly, 37 recommendations, none one of them uh, was, was calling for money because money is a necessary ingredient and the financial instruments must be aligned to, to allow all the, all the uh, policy objectives and, and, and strategies uh, we all are, are speaking about. And, and I think sustainability is something uh, what we are speaking already for some time about, but while reading through the, through the report uh, recently, I, I discovered that most of the recommendations are still valid. And, and uh, it, can be, it can be projected to, to many, many areas uh, which, of which uh, several are directly connected to synergies. Therefore, I would really highlight if I would be asked to, to give one single, single word here as, as, a, as a final message from, from this panel, sustainability is an issue. Thank you. 
and we thank you. Uh, Leah, what is your ambition for the years to come? <laughs> um, so the, the, the first point is very practical. Um, I think, as I was saying at the very beginning, we have a robust European process for research infrastructures. Um, and I think we need to maintain it, be proud of it, and improve it. I introduce the right incremental improvements in order to take stock of all the experience and the maturity of the landscape. So in particular, I believe that the ongoing work that we have now in ESFRI to improve the methodology, to have a more ambitious landscape analysis that will address the multiple dimensions of the infrastructures. In other words, not only the infrastructures themselves, but also the services they provide, and also the, their instrumentation, common instrumentation standardization needs that they may have, common technologies that they may need in the future. And these have to be benchmarked against uh, user needs, not random user needs, but through federated uh, user needs that are quite representative at European level. So this will give us a more uh, complete picture of which are the needs. So we, we need to have, in order to plan ahead, the first ingredient is a more robust roadmap that includes more detailed information. The second important element that I believe will come through this process is a new financial engineering model, which is not based on funding by opportunity, but funding by design. Um, how do we do this? By matching the roadmap needs to the costing for the different phases of the life cycle, and from there extrapolate the financing needs, and then on this basis we need to have a political compromise what stems from the national level, what stems from the European level, and which programs can contribute. This is an implementation detail. I think the, 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 the starting point is the right costing and the right costing per life cycle uh, phase or stage of the infrastructure. If we look at the example of partnerships in a much smaller scale, this is exactly what they do. They have a strategic research agenda, a roadmap, costs, and ambitions of what they are trying to achieve. On this basis, we design calls uh, or other implementation mechanisms. Okay, So it's as simple as that. It's more planning on the content and financial side. Second element, uh, looking ahead towards the future, is um, uh, the link to other policies. I think the link to other policies should not be superficial or simply by the principle of linking to other policies, but again by design. Why? Because research infrastructures are enablers for finding solutions to complex societal challenges, be that environment, health, uh, and other areas. Also, Research infrastructures are high-tech facilities that have an extreme importance to the innovation ecosystem in Europe, to industrial value chains, and the technologies of the future. Infrastructures are service providers. They are service providers towards testing new materials, towards preparing new infrastructures, towards transferring technologies. They're also users of uh, industrial services and therefore they are enablers of value chains around them and this story needs to be properly explained and then the right links need to be implemented. For example, if research infrastructures offer services to policies, it should not be technology push from infrastructure saying these are my applications or these are their users that used my infrastructure by opportunity, but rather design those services, say what I want to achieve in the long term, which are the products, what operational services are put in place, how do I do that? Because this introduces a lot of constraints and therefore how do I finance this? So I think this is a kind of reflection we should have because of the maturity that we have um, in the landscape. And if we manage to be successful in this, and then the next step is probably also see what uh, it stems from the European level. For example, we know that we have the challenge of establishing a verification system for emissions. Who does this? Who pays for this? 
likewise, for energy, for health, we had a successful example of the COVID-19 platform, many solutions, many discussions about how we share data, what do we do, and so on. How do we operationalize all these elements? I think this should be part of a strategic reflection that can bring, lead us to a spin-off from research towards more operational services, not across the board, not to the detriment of scientific excellence, but optimizing the use of all our investments at European level and all the potential that science can bring to society. Be that in the public domain, but also, why not, in the private domain, value creation and industrial value chains and so on, as I was saying before. Um, maybe final point, uh, one word on uh, talents and universities, because I think this was raised uh, a lot here. I think there is an extremely nice synergy that we can uh, improve between infrastructures and the role of universities, the preparation of the next skill set uh, to the market, the training of uh, brilliant scientists, the researchers attracting the right talent and so on. And here I think there is a lot of potential. Uh, these are questions that we have been asking ourselves in the European strategy for universities. The innovation communication brings a lot of actions on talents. And I think in the coming um, period, we will be looking to establish synergies between these, again, in a functional way, not in a theoretical way. A lot on our plate, but I think uh, these are important elements, I believe, so to, to sum up uh, the incremental improvements that we can do in roadmap methodology to bring the right content, the financial engineering are important next steps that I think we are ready to go to, and then the operational dimension and the link to innovation is probably the immediate next step. Thank you so much, Leah, for your comprehensive contribution. Uh, ad hoc, I'm passing just, the floor just, to Jan, <laughs> because just, he wants to follow up. Just one simple sentence to complement what uh, Leah was saying, and it, it's just really for sake of completeness and, 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 and clarity of understanding of the concept Leah was developing on. I mean, a part of the life cycle is also the end of the life of one infrastructure. It, does not necessarily mean a closure of a research infrastructure, but certainly a reconsideration of its role. And, okay. and uh, this is a part of the landscaping, and the only word I would like to highlight here, because it will become more important when optimizing a, an efficiently working ecosystem of research infrastructures is monitoring. This was the only sentence I wanted to add. Yeah, good point. Yesi, your opinions. Okay, I, I think that that's a very good point. It, it also happens in practice, I mean, especially in life sciences with the advent of some technologies, some mm. are becoming less frequently necessary. I, I would maybe mention three adjustments. One at national level. I think uh, really first, it, there should be long-term commitment because the decisions about setting up infrastructure are really long-term. Just to briefly mention an example, Six years ago, we decided to set up an internal core facility which last year qualified for the national roadmap and if it's going to be financed at the end of this year, then it will take another five years for it to develop. So I think seven, six years, maybe a decade is the appropriate funding period for, for established infrastructures. Also, I think governments should improve in uh, really thinking together about operational and reinvestment funding. In my experience in public budgeting, the thinking about those two items is rarely connected very well. Also at the institutional level, uh, just to be also self-critical sometimes. So, so, so that's first improvement. Second improvement, I would say we need bigger budget for ERC. I think ERC, which has demonstrably given also a guarantee of really bringing frontier edge results is widely accepted not only in Europe, it should become more accessible because a lot of talent is not being funding, a lot of good research, so, so I think bigger budget for ERC. And I think there are really very good points and that's a third adjustment about the dual degrees, maybe let's call it high level professional degrees. 
I think it's not limited only to data science, uh, but for instance at SATEC we extensively work on microscopy mm. and we develop a concept of school of microscopy that, that, that would serve also the industry, which is a very high added value industry. And this is something which we should learn to use this potential of, of research infrastructures as high level professional degree training centers much better and much more widely in Europe than, than we do now. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, now it's the right time to approach uh, our audience, our distinguished guests. I can see. Uh, very strong personalities from within the era of research infrastructure in this conference hall. So now it's your turn. Do you want to approach our panelists uh, with any comment, remark, suggestion, question? Whoever is willing to take the floor, please introduce yourself so that we know which institution or infrastructure you are representing. Hello, my name is Jiri Kolman. I am a uh, uh, project manager of uh, research infrastructure CECOS, uh, dedicated to various uh, environmental uh, research infrastructures. We have been participated uh, in uh, several S3 S and Rx. And uh, I would like uh, to make maybe suggestion, or maybe it had been discussed previously in some forums, uh, about uh, motivation of potential users of uh, RIs, of research infrastructures, for example, by bonification of the uh, Horizon Europe uh, uh, project applications, or that you would be, you could have a chance that you could duly justify that in your, in your case you are not able to use the potential uh, research infrastructure in your uh, research. We have good experience, for example, that ERC holder used our research infrastructure, so I can imagine that it can work, and at least to push the potential users of the uh, research infrastructures by the, by, in the projects funded by, uh, from other pillars and, and so on. I think it would be the way how to promote the, 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 the potential RIs to the potential users and uh, also to how better use the money. That uh, I think this would be the way also how to use the synergies of uh, other uh, Horizon Europe uh, grants, for example. Yeah, so bonification, I think, might be also the motive, sort of incentive how to uh, better use the... Because then, of course, the potential applicant must be in touch with the with the potential research infrastructure and then it creates uh, some more uh, contacts and so on and co cooperation even though the application is not, for example, uh, supported. Thanks a lot for your comment. Uh, does anyone from within our panel uh, want to, to address this comment, Jacques? Thank you for this very good question. So I think I answered partly the, 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 the question at the beginning, but you can find in this document in the Eric Forum Policy Brief 2020, you can find some of the answer, meaning that there are different uh, level of answer. The, the first one is to improve the communication on the use of uh, research infrastructures, because this is currently something that is uh, not optimal, let's say in the cold text, uh, it should be mentioned that uh, this sort of project uh, should require services from different infrastructures. So this is a matter of communication. People should, and uh, we are guilty for that, meaning that we have to better communicate and to target the right scientific community to, to, to promote the use of our services. The second answer is the, the one that is proposed by the ERC, whereby when you get a grant from the ERC, there is a budget, but which is an additional budget, meaning we avoid the competition between the budget for science and the budget for infrastructure, facilities, and equipment. So just by adding this extra budget for access to large facilities, for purchasing of equipment, and access to large facilities include normally the, the, and this should be clarified, the access to large research infrastructure is a way to ensure the quality and the technology, the quality of data, the, 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 the optimal 
environmental methodology and technology without hampering the, the budget for science. Because in many projects, when we, we participate in clinical trial projects, the investigator is coming and say, okay, we are very happy to work with you, but please shrink your budget to just 1% of the total budget. And in fact, it's not possible because the services we provide usually correspond to 10, 15% of the total budget. And there is a struggle and a competition between the scientific budget and the uh, infrastructure budget. So having a ring-fenced budget would be something really great, and not only for the ERC, but maybe for all the funding scheme from the, the partnership, the Horizon Europe, and so on, because this is a way to clarify the situation, and this would be a very strong incentive for the use of uh, research infrastructures. Yeah, go ahead, Leah. Um, so, um, integrating the user in the, um, the work program in its design and also in the implementation in terms of eligibility and so on is a very important uh, element and I think you have been quite exhaustive in, uh, in possible ideas. Uh, however, what I would like to flag is the step before projects and before calls. Uh, I believe it is important that uh, some preparatory work with um, federating the user communities in the right way, and this is quite complex because it's about yeah. who is the user. Uh, this, this is a very complex question to answer, but what we can see in other areas is, for example, uh, we went through the establishment of user fora per big domains of infrastructures, for example, and uh, this allowed the expression of the requirements from those users in specific documents that allowed then design. And therefore, if we have this preparatory step, one can then envisage to validate the interaction between the user and the infrastructure in a project, whereby the infrastructure delivers the service according to user requirements and adjusts the bugs during the project. Uh, that would be another uh, enhancement that one can think of. Yes. I must say I'm not fully convinced that we should motivate users specifically to use infrastructure. I think they should be motivated by the need. And they should have the tool to, to do that, which is sometimes about, especially at national level, about negotiating with the funding providers that they accept the payments from, from the grant for that purpose. One way may be ring fencing, other way may be just having very flexible budgets. I think the ERC advanced lump sum going up now is, is an excellent idea that should be basically used everywhere because, because detailed planning in scientific projects is, is often very, very tricky. So I, I would keep it simple maybe. I, I'm afraid, I, I think it's part of assessment of research infrastructures if they engage with the user community, we have the user committees and other tools for that. If we, we, we could add it as another layer to evaluation of specific projects, but, but I think then it will just another layer. So I would keep it simple and give people the tool within the project budgets. Jan, you want to comment as well? Yeah, uh, thank you. I mean, uh, obviously you have tackled an uh, issue that uh, it's not uh, very, very simple to, to be answered and has uh, various, various dimensions along which it can be seen. So I would uh, pretty much agree that uh, there shall be to the most possible extent uh, being implemented measures to, to remove obstacles of using infrastructures as part of an other uh, research funding system. I, I would also agree to everything what was said by, by Jacques, but I have similar concerns as, as expressed by, by Yiri that we shall not go too far because, I mean, the excellence of services uh, the research infrastructure uh, provides somehow uh, assumes that there is sufficient demand. And uh, there is for those top research infrastructures, a sizable, sizable uh, oversubscription in, in terms of, of access uh, demands fro from the users. And uh, I am saying always, when having a strategic look to research infrastructures, that 
the first sign when uh, uh, research infrastructure re really needs a reconsideration of its mission is when the quality of the users drops down. It's not the number of the users, but all, already at the quality level, if you see a drop down of, of the users, then you shall reconsider whether there is not something wrong with the research infrastructure. And you're even going, and I know you didn't mean that like this, but you, you would even uh, in, in an extreme case go one step further and you would say, because we are paying for a research infrastructure, we have to make sure that there is sufficient users. I mean, uh, this is a way I would not support. Thank you. Maybe just as briefly, even at, at SATEC, even at the level of equipment, we monitor this very closely and we even took decisions to, to close down a core facility and transfer it to research group or its equipment and then we told them, okay, it's yours, but the cost and the reinvestment is also yours. So, 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 so I think in this, uh, the management at all levels needs to be very tough because costs of research are endless. Definitely. Who's going to be the next to raise a question? I can see a hand. Mikhail, go ahead. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, um, I'm Michael Proza uh, from FZU, Institute of Physics of the Czech Academy of Sciences. And I actually have uh, two questions, uh, most likely for Jan and maybe also for Jana, if it is allowed, because it is concerning the European Strategy Forum on Research Infrastructures. And uh, I'm interested. Uh, what are the differences in relations uh, between uh, S3 Forum and uh, uh, individual uh, countries or the policymakers in individual countries? So if it's uh, somehow streamlined across Europe or if there are some uh, more extreme uh, approaches of some countries or uh, different in some others? And uh, I'm also interested, and this is the second question, uh, if uh, you will be able to change the relations between individual countries and S3, uh, what uh, you will change and uh, what uh, uh, is the ideal uh, state uh, according to you? So thank you very much. Thank you, Mikhail. If I understood it correctly, Mikhail is asking about the level of alignment, uh, member state policies uh, with the S3 level. Jan, do you want to take the floor? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I would hope that uh, Jana would come in, but she, she, she's busy with, with, with uh, <laughs> taking, taking notes here. Uh, no, but uh, let me, let me uh, take the, the question from a bit broader perspective. I mean, S3 uh, started as an uh, endeavor of, of, of several, several member states, several people to, to find a common approach to research infrastructures. And, and uh, it was for a long, long time uh, dominated by, by a spirit of, of common understanding, of, of, of problem solving rather than, than pushing for, for national priorities. And I mean, this is a notion I understood a little bit in, in your question because this spirit uh, persists still in, 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 in S3. So, uh, the, the, the very important internal rule we have developed and we are maintaining in S3 is no voting procedure. This means finding a common sense solution. And this can be partially then uh, an answer to your, to your, your question. The, the other thing, and I, I started to speak about it, uh, while addressing uh, some of the of the questions earlier placed by by Lukas to to this panel is is this principle of variable geometry. So if if there is sufficient consensus among a group of member states, they simply go ahead and, and have the blessing of others who do not necessarily need to participate at a given time uh, moment. So, so this is also just a part of your question. And the, 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 the other thing is that certainly, certainly there are differences between the member states because every state is working on its own uh, research uh, innovation, research infrastructure 
agenda, and we, we, we are trying to, to align the opinions in quite, quite open discussions. So uh, I, I would like to tend to say that uh, the question you're, you're placing here is for me too technical to be answered because I am in my, my holistic view rather naive and I hope that uh, this uh, collaborative spirit without uh, too much uh, comitology or, or all, the, all the internal processes will persist for, for, for S3 for long because it brings us really forward. It's not an a, a easy process because you, you spend a lot of time in discussing, but it's really a pro problem-solving orientation. And I, I resist to, to reply, uh, resist? To, 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 to reply in, in that sense, and I, I reframe, this was the word I was looking for, uh, to, to address uh, concrete member states. Thank you. Okay. Jana may and I can see ask. that Jana wants to step in. Jana? Well, uh, uh, very briefly, because you challenged also me. So, uh, what I could only add to Jan, which was uh, quite exhaustive in his reply, is that we have the alignment uh, when it comes from members uh, uh, from ESRI, which is a collection of member states and the Commission, to the, member, to the individual member states through the roadmap. Today we're discussing financing, so I'll limit the reply very briefly just to the financing part. So the, the alignment goes through the roadmaps. They're adopted on European level, Voluntarily, countries join and then they might have national roadmaps through which then prioritize also European investments, pulling the resources towards jointly agreed priorities on European level. However, when it comes to funding instruments on national level, if this was also a part of your question, now there is um, certainly the possibility with this collection of member states to build on the knowledge that they all have not to align the funding approaches on national level, but to learn from each other in order to provide better uh, framework conditions for the, to make research infrastructures more sustainable by learning from each other. And we are also working on that now. Couldn't agree more, Jana. Uh, we are uh, running out of time, uh, but um, Ladies and gentlemen, I will still allow one question because I saw uh, a hand raised in the audience and um, it's uh, Andrzej Hradiel, uh, the coordinator and organizer of the ICRI 2022 conference. Uh, 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 hello everyone, uh, I would have a question to Leah and uh, possibly to others as well. Uh, Leah mentioned the, uh, well, the different funding opportunities for research infrastructures within Horizon in general. Uh, what can we jointly do to better, in a pragmatic way, to better use those opportunities? Uh, so that's one question. The second question, in the last work program, 2021, uh, and also in the upcoming one, 23, 24, uh, there uh, will be and there have been calls uh, on trying to develop the notion of better maybe funding access in cooperation between the member states and Horizon Europe. Uh, if you could maybe in a sort of strategic uh, way say what the Commission would expect out of that, what are the long-term expectations and whether the projects which have just started actually from the from the first work program, whether they do have already some uh, pragmatic outcomes in this sense. Quite complex question, but I would like kindly ask uh, Leah for a brief answer. Yes, brief answer. How we can uh, make the best of the opportunities that we have? Uh, one way to see it, it is there are calls, so it's about creating awareness about these options to all possible beneficiaries or possible applicants. So probably, so this is a number of, this is a question on outreach at the level of national contact points, at the level of national delegations uh, from S for creating more uh, awareness with beneficiaries. Maybe some improvements that we can make uh, directly in the funding and tenders portal on the basis of keywords to link 
topics. Uh, for example, researchers and research infrastructures keywords uh, and therefore bring forward uh, MSCA calls or other calls that could be relevant. Looking towards the future, it's about also building more structural bridges. And this is the example that I mentioned between uh, pillar one and pillar three, taking researchers from the project portfolio under ERC, for example, and giving them an opportunity in a startup funded by IEC. But this is something to, to be discussed. With regard to your the second question, the outcome of the projects in 21-22 work program, too early to say. Um, as you know, the start uh, it takes a little bit of time. Uh, so we have just started uh, projects uh, from 21, so I think it's too early to take stock. Uh, but certainly there have been a number of points, uh, either challenges uh, or, um, or uh, interests, and, and I think we, we have to spend the next uh, period discussing how to take stock from this experience and whether it is we should work on the basis of continuity or whether we should make adjustments, but it is too early to take stock of that. Thank you so much, Leah. So uh, since I don't want to cut your coffee break even shorter, uh, let me briefly conclude. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank uh, the uh, panelists, uh, Yiri, Leah, Jan, and Jack. Thank you very much for accepting our uh, invitation to join this uh, parallel breakout session and uh, contribute to our debates on uh, using the synergies when it comes to funding of research infrastructures. Uh, I believe that uh, we uh, gathered a lot of uh, uh, interesting ideas, uh, uh, inspirations maybe as well. And uh, besides Jana Kolar, who is going to wrap up the debate uh, during the final plenary, uh, let me assure you that uh, this debate has been uh, also a very valuable input for the Czech presidency. Uh, as you are very well aware, research infrastructures are one of our core priorities. Uh, we will be uh, facilitating uh, the adoption of council conclusions on research infrastructures to provide the European RI stakeholders with policy only orientations. Uh, and uh, we will be, of course, aiming at strengthening and advancing the research infrastructure ecosystem in Europe in terms of further consolidation, further integration. And uh, as I said, this panel debate was uh, definitely very valuable input. So thank you very much and uh, big hands for our panelists.